All right, we're live. I apologize, team. I have just been talking for a couple of minutes and realized that uh, I wasn't actually live. Apologies for that. So welcome to the webinar. We'll try and get up to speed a little bit quickly. Uh, this is on automating goal tracking and reporting. My name's Laura, and I look after the customer success team here at Cascade. And we're also, I'm also uh, joined by Nick, who I'm calling a tech wizard, and we'll be taking this through the Excel integration today. Let me just see if I can mute the chat one second in case you can hear that. Here we go. So agenda for today, a little bit of an introduction, uh, how to build good KPIs. Maybe that's what's brought you here today. Or if you're after something a little bit technical, as I mentioned, Nick will be taking you through how to hook up Excel to Cascade. And lastly, building great reports. So we'll go into the Cascade dashboard area and show you once you've built good KPIs, you've connected them to Excel, how do you automate your reporting? So hopefully something for everybody. So why care about KPIs anyway? Hopefully you do, or if not, hopefully you will by the end of this. They can help you measure your progress against goals. So you have those ambitious objectives as an organization, but how do you truly monitor success? They help you monitor the health of the company. Is revenue going up, going down? Hopefully not. And they help you uncover trouble spots. So are you tracking KPIs um, and maybe you're finding some uh, trouble spots across different teams in the organization? They also help reveal patterns and trends and indicate whether a goal needs adjusting. And my screen keeps uh, popping back out. So hopefully everyone can see the deck, but let's see how it goes. Drop a message in the chat if, uh, if it keeps disappearing. But what's wrong with KPI tracking today? Well, maybe you're here because you're fed up of having KPI data everywhere within your business and it's pretty scattered. Or perhaps you're lacking context. This is a big theme I see, particular, particularly when people uh, come and join Cascade, is that they are using Cascade for objectives, maybe project management, but not really thinking about KPIs as bringing in the context and bringing that extra layer to their goals. Or perhaps another reason why you may be here today is spending hours building uh, those nice, pretty PowerPoint decks every month for the monthly review, uh, and it's taking too long. Or maybe you're having lack of visibility over data in real time. Another real common issue is that data is everywhere. It's being pushed to Excel. It's not actually in real time. Or the teams that need to know actually just don't have access. And that really feeds into that lack of context. And then lastly, maybe accountability uh, over action is not shared. You've got teams with big, uh, big goals, big objectives. They have projects they're running, but if they're not sure how to measure success or even seeing or being held accountable for that success, then that action uh, is not going to go too far. So really Cascade can be your source of truth. And this really for me is where Cascade should live at the heart of your organization. We'll be focusing on the Excel integration today, but there are a number of others such as Salesforce. There are some others like Teams, which is more of a collaboration integration uh, than looking at goal progress or KPI progress. But there's a whole host, thousands of other tools that you can integrate with, um, and we'll share more about that later today. But for me, it all starts with good data in will give you good data out. And what I mean by that is if you're putting really bad KPIs or structuring them really badly in Cascade, you're not going to get good reporting at the back end. So I'll spend a couple of minutes now going through how to build good KPIs in Cascade to give you that real grounding before you move on to integrations, before you move on and think about reporting. So I'll just take a pause there, see if there's any questions or anything yet. Um, yes, the presentation is being recorded. So I realize I talk a little bit fast and there's a lot of content. So hopefully uh, I can do this a little bit slower and you also get the recording and the slides so you can refer back to them. So first thing first, what makes a good KPI? You really want it to have a blend of the identity, the ambition, and the focus. And that's really the sweet spot of a good KPI. You want it to always be quantitative and always be time bound. You want to define the success for that top level objective. So let's say, for example, your business wants to see aggressive growth. That is not a KPI. That is the objective. The KPI would be to grow revenue to 1 million, 10 million, 100 million. 
by the end of the year, the end of the quarter. You really want it to be truly defined as what time period do we want to do this in? And also how will we define the success, i.e. the 1 million, the 10 or the 100? And that together will act as the scorecard for, the, for your company health. It'll also help you identify when to make adjustments. Perhaps you are trying to get 1 million by the end of the quarter, and so far you've only got 10,000. Well, maybe that goal is too ambitious, or maybe you don't have the right people in place, or perhaps you're not doing the right marketing. So it really helps you to keep your pulse on what's happening and also help you to recognize and analyze patterns and trends. One of the examples we're going to be doing today in the Excel integration is revenue. So we can see that revenue over time, but that what that will give us is kind of looking at the trends over the months, but we could also look back and say, how are we performing this month versus this month last year, for example, to understand those trends. And lastly, don't forget they need to be measurable. I see time and time again, KPIs in Cascade that are basically just objectives or projects. They need to be measurable. They need to have either a people target, hire 10 people. They need to have a revenue target, make $10 million. Whatever it is, make sure that you can measure it. And you might not have all of the answers today, but one really good thing you can do is just go out there and see what other people in the industry are doing. You don't need to copy what other people in the business are doing, but you can certainly use it for inspiration. Also on our website, if you go to cascade.app, we actually have a KPI generator. So you can choose your industry, let's say uh, retail or marketing, and you can choose your team. And we'll give you the top five, the top six KPIs that we see in that team. Um, so it's a really great place to start, even just to see how you can write out the KPIs. But remember, wherever your KPIs are today, in a month's time, they'll be more thoughtful. In a month's time, you'll be thinking more about them. You'll be discussing them and you'll be tracking them. And I guarantee in a few months time, you'll look back and wonder, how did we ever perform without them? So remember, just start today. You don't need to be perfect, but have a couple of things that you can hang that success on. And remember, they won't always be trending in the right direction. But the idea or the key is that you're discussing them. They're front of mind. Your team is aware of them and you can track and move and be agile uh, to, to make change. So the magic formula, hopefully you already have your objectives. Again, they don't need to be perfect. Then you want to define success. And this is thinking about the by how much. So we want aggressive growth. That's our objective, great. But by how much? And that might mean different things to different people. So then decide on the measurement. And this is where that homework comes in. Do you measure in dollars, pounds? Uh, something else, then do your homework and figure out what's important to your business, to your leadership team, to you, to your teams in your industry, and then write them out. So a good idea is to put the action. And I like to think of this as in something like, I want to increase, I want to decrease, I want to reduce, I want to improve, any of that action, and then the detail. So the detail is revenue or uh, safety incidents, something like that. And then you have your value. How much do you want to increase, decrease, reduce? Um, and then finally, the deadline. So don't forget to explicitly call out by when you want to do this. And you might have different variations. You may have a deadline that's very short term, especially now uh, with the climate and what's going on in the world. You may only be looking forward by a quarter. But then you might also have that KPI for the next three years or the next year. And if that's OK, you can have multiple variations of the deadline. So what are some good examples before we, we kick over to Cascade? So maybe you want to increase capacity utilization. This is a, a, a manufacturing example being in the, in the factories. Maybe you want to increase it to 55%. You can also do something like increase online store traffic by, now don't forget by and to mean very different things. We want to increase the utilization to 55% and we want to increase the store traffic by 25%. So it may already be at 30, you want to increase it by 25. Obviously that would give you 55. So that wording is, is critically important. And one thing that I really like a tip of using when it comes to both objectives and KPIs is try not to be too wordy or too, uh, I don't know, not, not precise, but almost like too smart and too silly with the wording. You want anyone across the business to know exactly what you're talking about. If I am in a different team, 
I know what reduced incidence to one means. It's really clear, it's really simple. So some other examples, increasing the transaction value by $10. Again, we've got that dollar sign, we've got a percentage sign, it can be whatever measure you want it to be. And I put this other example here of the project milestones because not only can we integrate with more of those financial metrics or those KPIs around employee satisfaction that may live in a, in a HR system, but we can implement uh, or integrate with things like JIRA. So we can bring in that project data as well. Um, and we'll come on to that in a moment. I'll just pause there for one sec. I'll see if there's any questions and let you digest. So good question on KPI and metric. Um, what is the difference? Personally, they're interchangeable. Um, for me, a KPI or a metric or a measure or a target or um, yeah, anything like that are kind of one and the same. Whatever you use in your business, stick to one. Ideally, you might call them metrics. Some industries do. I personally think they're one and the same. In sales, you typically see targets. Targets are essentially part of a KPI. Your KPI is to increase revenue. In sales, you all have a target. In other parts of the business, you might be looking at metrics. Um, so personally, I think they're the same. You may find lots of other terminology online that um, don't mean that, and some people probably disagree with me, but essentially it's a way of measuring that success. I will get a link to the KPI generator, or unless somebody else, yep, Harini already has, thank you very much. Um, and also for samples for different industries, we, are, we do have a couple of templates and things for different uh, industries. So hopefully they will come through as well. Okay, so what I wanted to touch on is wherever your data is stored, the integrations uh, bring it all together in Cascade. So the ones I have highlighted here are goal progress integrations. That's what we call them internally. They are essentially whenever you have goals and you want to integrate the progress with Cascade, they probably live in one of these systems, either a CRM like Salesforce or just an Excel sheet, very, very common. Or perhaps you have Google Analytics. So thinking about website data, uh, audience data, we can feed directly from analytics or Google Sheets if you don't have the Excel environment. And then Jira, uh, as I mentioned, if you have typically engineering and uh, product teams working in Jira, maybe you want to bring that project data into Cascade as well. So we'll be focusing on Excel today as the example. When we look at other integrations, Teams, Outlook, and Calendar, they are our collaboration integration. So we're not focusing on that today, but they are available if you want to integrate Cascade into those platforms. So what I will do now is I'm gonna flip my screen over to Cascade and I'm going to touch on building KPIs. So we'll take a few minutes here to do this and then I will pass over to Nick and he will do the fun bit in Excel. So let me just, Share my screen, one second. Feel free to uh, pop any questions in if you've got any. Okay. All right, let me know if you can see the screen. Give me a thumbs up, Nick, if you can see Cascade. Thank you. Good to go. Okay. Perfect, thank you. So first things first, um, Hopefully you're all familiar with Cascade. I'm in the planner section. I have my focus areas on the left, aggressive growth, the example I used earlier. We've got an objective, grow in a healthy, sustainable manner. I'm gonna create a new KPI here. And let me just grab the title. So I'm gonna create a KPI, I'm gonna click add. So you can see I've got a couple of other KPIs. I have a couple of projects as well. I'm gonna add a new one. And I'm going to do increase year on year sales. I'm going to have it as a KPI and I'm going to have it start at the beginning of the year and I'm going to end it at the end of this year. Then I've got the owner and I'm just going to click launch for now and I'll tell you why in a second. Um, I prefer to do that. We get the basic details in and now I'm going to expand it out and go to tracking. So for those who aren't familiar, this is the back end. This is where we can set up all of those intricate details that are going to make this KPI be really powerful. 
So first things first is increasing sales is going to be a revenue metric. So the target here needs to be something else, not 100%. Um, remind me of our target, Nick. Was it 5.72 million? Yep, that's exactly it. Hopefully I've done enough zeros. And then I'm going to do the dollar unit. So what I've done now is I've moved this metric, uh, this KPI, sorry, to be $5.72 million instead of percentage. We can also do some other things. So like higher is better. In this instance, obviously higher is better. We want more sales. But if we're thinking about something like um, safety incidents, maybe you want to make this lower. And you can also do some maintain targets. So if you want to maintain anything, you have the option of exactly on target. So I'm going to do higher is better for now. Secondly, and this is the bit that always catches people out, is we can go and edit our expected progress. So what this means is the system will be saying, how many months do we have to do this metric? And then what is the target? If you are changing the target, like I did from 100 to millions, you want to go and do a reset. And at this point, you can reset whether you want to track it monthly, quarterly, or weekly. I'm going to say monthly, let's keep it really simple. And you'll see those targets have now changed. We now have every month, we need to accumulate this much in sales revenue to help hit our target of 5.7. Now you can go in here and change it, maybe as a business and quite typically, you'll have your own targets that you've already decided. Maybe in January, you'd like it to be 500,000. Maybe in February, you know, it's going to be a slow month for reasons that are in your industry. Maybe you can drop this to 300,000, and then you start to accelerate from March. <clears throat> so really what you could do here, um, and bear in mind as well, this is cumulative. So we want 300 in February. So we add that to the 500 and make it 800,000. So you can start to see here a 500K change, a 300K, 630, et cetera. You can also add your forecast in as well. So this is a new feature. I won't touch too much on this, but if you have a forecast, uh, as well as a target, you can drop that in. So a quick recap on that. You want your overall target set at the top. You want your unit, so dollars, percentage, whatever that might be. If it's not in this list, you can create your own as well. And then you want to put your expected progress down the bottom. So what is it that we want each month? Once you've done all of that, the system's then ready for you to either pump data in manually, or our preference would be bring it in from Excel. And I will get Nick to touch on the couple of ways of doing this. One is obviously we're looking at a metric that started before today. Perhaps you're doing metrics from today and you're gonna track going forward. Or quite typically, this KPI actually started at the beginning of the year. We also, you know, we have, we're at the end of May now, we have five months worth of data. We wanna bring this into Cascade and we can do that through the integration. Anything I missed, Nick, before I hand over to you? Nope, all that was perfect. And Wait. what I can do right now is I'm just gonna start sharing my screen. And I'm gonna be sharing my whole screen so you'll be able to see an Excel spreadsheet and Cascade itself. All right, so my name's Nick, and I'm gonna take you through a couple of use cases for an Excel integration. Uh, a lot of people on this call might know these use cases already, but it's always going to be a, a good refresher to go through them. So as you can see here, I've got a quick spreadsheet uh, that I filled with dummy data and formatted as an example that we'll use for this webinar. Uh, within this spreadsheet, we are tracking sales goals for 2022, as, as Laura mentioned. And then uh, we're also going to be comparing them against our 2021 sales goals as well. So let's just quickly walk through the sheet so we're all on the same, uh, on the same foot here. B is just obviously just going to be our end of month data points. Uh, we're going to use these as well to associate with our historical data tracking Excel integration within Cascade. Uh, we're just going get to get that in just a moment here. Uh, column C is going to be our sales goal in general. Column D is just going to be the actual sales for each one of these months, of course. And that feeds into column E here, where it's just the aggregation of all these numbers, the cumulative sales. Column F is where it gets a little bit interesting. This is the month over month change. And what that means is that we're uh, comparing the actual sales here, column K, to the actual sales in uh, column D. And you can see here that uh, our first month in January, we're at negative 1%, but it looks like we've got positive growth here. The 
thus far. G is going to be just the overall sales percentage number and what that formula you can see up top here, it might be quite small for you, but what it, it basically what it does is it takes these cumulative sales and uh, divides it against our sales goal of 5.72 million. All right, so uh, this table right here, like I mentioned, is just holding our 21, 2021 sales numbers as well. So just to take a quick break, the you can see here that these sales within the Excel spreadsheet are, uh, there are formulas calculating various data points. Uh, doing these calculations outside of Excel will always be more desirable than doing them directly within uh, Cascade themselves. Uh, it goes back to what Laura brought up in terms of we're putting good information in, will mean good in, getting good information and good insights out. All right, so just diving into Cascade, what we're going to look at is I have a KPI set up right here called increase year over year sales to 50%. You can see that our integration is already set up here. I'm just going to go over this one and we're going to set up the historical data tracking together. So if I click edit to see the integration itself, you can see that we're using our single cell data tracking tying into the cell F14. And that is this cell right here. Uh, and what this is doing is it's just adding up all of these month over month changes. And the KPI itself is that we would like to get to a 50% increase on our sales. So this is a simple integration, a simple use case for Excel single point data tracking integration, but it's very highly effective using the synergy of both Cascade, of course, as well as Excel, being able to formulate uh, data points before you bring them in. All right, so let's jump into the, uh, let me give this a quick refresh so I get the correct, most up-to-date information. So I'm going to jump into the KPI that Laura just built and then integrate with that one. I'm pretty sure that was our increase year over year sales to 5.72. That was going to be right here. All right, opening this up, going to our tracking information, expected progress, you can see everything there. This is what Laura was just working on, what she just spun up. To get this hooked up, I'm gonna click our drop down menu. I'm gonna click Microsoft Excel. I've already set up our connection here. It's just a one to two step progress, uh, process, excuse me. It's very easy to do. You can see right here, this is a shared integration. Oh. And what that means is that every person on this Cascade account can use this integration. You can make it shared or you can make it private. So here it's going to be shared. Select file. So this file is going to be called Cascade Integration Example. I'm going to go here and you can see it can be right on the top just because I've been integrating with it before. However, if you have a ton of files like this has, like uh, this OneDrive has, I can start typing in Cascade. And then as I start typing things in, uh, you can see it filters out your files. With that, our sheet is pulling in 2022 sales. That correlates with our 2022 sales tab right here. So you can have multiple worksheets within the same workbook that you're integrating with or uh, multiple worksheets within the same workbook that just hold different information for your team in general. 2022 sales. And instead of single cell data tracking, we're gonna click historical data tracking on this one. You can see we've got a few different dropdown menus here to uh, fill in as well. We got a little tool tip as well to help you understand what's going on. So our date column going back here, you can see we're just going to be integrating with our 2022 sales. So date column will be B. And our progress column is going to be, for this example, for this KPI rather, it's going to be E. So you can obviously integrate with any different, any other one of these columns as well, depending on the structure of your KPI. Uh, you can integrate with D or F or G. Uh, if it's a 2021 sales KPI, we can use J as the date column and then integrate with K or L, of course. Again, it just goes about how you're restructuring the KPI. Uh, Laura quickly touched on our expected progress, that it's we're expecting our cumulative sales. So that's why I'm choosing it. Now, this one is just the cadence of how often this integration will run to update your information. I usually suggest daily, just in case we have the next month's data in, and we first originally think it's 425, uh, but we get information back and it's actually 420. So just in case there's uh, some change in the information, you don't want to keep bringing in uh, different points of information. I usually just do it daily, call it good, and save it. So 
we've got everything set up here. All I'm going to do is uh, click sync now. So going back here, I expect to see uh, this number right here pulling in. We integrated for our progress as in column E. So I expect to see in our goal progress right here as a 1.564 pull in. Now, I also expect, since we're using this, 1.98. Oh, excuse me. This was, uh, it's because I put this right here. It's pulling in this 1.98. And that's actually a good thing that happened there. What happens with this is, is this is connected to our OneDrive account. And every time you take, every time you make a change to this cascade sheet on your OneDrive account, it's going to take a little bit to actually upload to your OneDrive. Either it's going to need to be living in the cloud on your OneDrive, on a SharePoint. The integration just needs to be able to pick up on this in the cloud somewhere. And there's always going to be a, maybe a five to second lag time. You can see I'm, I just saved it. You can see there's a little wheel here saying that uh, it's updating to your cloud and that's why we're pulling in this 1.94. So let's just keep that. We're gonna refresh it. And we're also gonna see a couple of data points up here on our tracking map as well. And what that's gonna do right here, and each one of these data points that are get automatically pulled in is gonna correlate with, uh, with E2, E3, E4, E5, E6, each one of these. And this is the historical data point data points that you can bring in in just one swoop. As long as you have your Excel document formatted like this, we can pull in uh, 20, 30 different data points all in the same time. You can see if I would integrate with this right here, we'd pull in 12 different data points and we would have this whole uh, tracking map built out for the whole year. And that's it. Um, so the connection will stay live as long as you don't disconnect it, of course. Uh, the sheet can even be used for this exact worksheet, can even be used for the 2021 sales, of course, as I mentioned before. Uh, we would get in 12 different data points, and then the goal progress would end on this three, blow this up a little bit, uh, 3.8 million right here. And uh, there is one caveat that I wanted to mention. I quickly touched on it. It's the, the ability for the sheet to live in the cloud. Uh, I mentioned a OneDrive or a SharePoint. As long as the sheet is somewhere in the cloud for uh, your integration to pick up on, you'll be able to find it within this drop down menu here, uh, and within this right here. And of course, if you have other information living in um, other uh, applications, if you have website traffic data living in Google Analytics, sales data in Salesforce, or project management data within JIRA, then you can use our other native integrations uh, to pick up on them and automatically bring them into Cascade as well. And I'm sure everybody here knows, but creating those automatic workflows really helps a ton, um, save a ton of time, and helps keep your strategy fed with the most relevant data at any point. Perfect. I'm going to exit out of here, and I'm going to pass it back to Laura. I'm pretty sure she's going to go over some examples of our dashboard reporting. Thank you, Nick. I've also just popped in the chat um, a bit of an intro and a video. So anyone who is looking at this for the first time, there's a lot of information to take in. Don't expect you to be a pro after this webinar. And then I've also put the help article. So that will take you step by step, pretty much what Nick has just taken you through. Um, so you can follow along um, at your leisure. Can you see the slide deck, Nick? Should be sharing. Yes, absolutely. Okay, perfect. So to recap, uh, there were a few questions in the chat actually about what else you can connect with. I think there was SharePoint. I think there was QuickBooks. So we have two um, places that we integrate with. The first one is Zapier. We've been connected with them a while. It is a third party service and they do also charge a fee. They can do a no code integration. So it's a drag and drop. You say, I want to connect, uh, you know, like Slack with Cascade and you can configure it. However, we've recently launched Power Automate. So this is probably 95% of our customer base is on the Microsoft stack. So if you use Teams, uh, Outlook, in the Microsoft environment, you likely have licenses for Power Automate. So you will require uh, probably just hooking in with someone in your IT team. It's a drag and drop uh, workflow solution. And you basically say, take this SharePoint, take this QuickBooks, integrate it with Cascade. It's very, very easy. Um, and we can support you through that if you get stuck. But what that means is it opens up more opportunities. So if you do have um, other systems that you really want to bring into Cascade, that is a really good route. So things like QuickBooks um, and some other ones, I think there was a question about 
if you don't host Excel on the cloud. Um, I don't know if there are alternatives, Nick, or if Power Automate will help there. Do you have an answer? Yep, I was actually just typing into the chat, but this will be great to, to tell everybody as well. But uh, if you're using Power Automate or Zapier, we can tie into sheets that aren't located on the cloud as well. The native integration will need to use the cloud, just that's just how it's structured with the APIs that we're using. But there's absolutely a way to do that uh, with the documents that are just living locally on your machine. Great. Thank you, Nick. So before I go into dashboards, how useful are people finding this? Um, are you wondering where has it been all of your life? Or maybe it will be a little bit useful. Or perhaps it's a little bit useful, but not a showstopper. Um, or perhaps not at all. You have everything you need and every KPI in the right place, and you have context and visibility. Or maybe you're confused. I would love to know your answers. I'll give you a few seconds here, and then uh, we will wrap up with some dashboarding. Hopefully you can submit your vote. Let's see. Okay, a few votes coming in here. <clears throat> so it looks like most people hovering around the fair bit. There's one vote for where has it been all my life, I'm glad. Few not showstoppers. Um, I'm glad no one's confused yet. That's good. <laughs> Okay, we'll give it a few more seconds here. Um, I will leave the poll up. Um, it looks like most people are hovering around number two a fair bit um, and also number one as well. So I guess hopefully this will wrap everything up. I am going to go back to Cascade and I'm going to show you some of the outputs you can have in dashboarding. So what you can see on my screen now, and it loads up in a second, I am in the tracking section and I'm in dashboards. So what I've built here is really a way to bring that context to light. So think of this dashboard as your replacement for PowerPoint, your PowerPoint uh, or session you'll do with your, te with your teams. You're reviewing the goals. You're reviewing the strategy. You're looking at the key accomplishments of your team. You're looking at the challenges and you're looking at the focus forward. And maybe the occasional time you might sprinkle in a bit of progress or KPIs um, and look at that performance. So what I've done is focus more on the KPI performance as opposed to the first part. Um, everyone knows Cascade is a powerful way to look at your accomplishments and look at your challenges and get that data from your teams. And also, we know that Cascade is a good way of reviewing objectives. However, where it's less commonly used because um, you need to get your good KPIs in here is really looking at the performance side of things. So what this dashboard is doing is we have a widget here to show us our agenda for the meeting. You can bring this up in the meeting and have that real time data and context. We can see how we're trending in our focus area. So I'm actually using the count of goals rather than progress. I'm seeing that actually a lot of our focus as a business is on aggressive growth, but not, not actually in top places to work. And maybe as a business, that's a great thing to look at. Maybe you're spending too much time in the growth side and not enough in the employee satisfaction side. So giving that visibility there. The next piece is around looking at key updates. So what are the key updates from your teams? Again, this is just a widget using updates and I'm looking at everything that's happening in aggressive growth. So what this is giving us is the context of where we are as a business and, and where we're uh, focusing at that strategic level. What are the key updates from the teams? You know, what are those accomplishments? What are the challenges that people are having? For example, here, you know, performance is tracking well, we've closed a big deal, forecasting is quite accurate, but what are the challenges? Hiring is slow, we lost good candidates, we need to focus on hiring more, te more people in Europe. And then you can bring in your KPIs. So I've got a few examples here. The first one, and actually I'm going to do refresh because I didn't refresh after Nick uh, integrated the data. So hopefully that data is there for me now. We'll give that a second to come through. And what I'm going to show you is I'm using two different types of widgets here. Yeah, we can see that data is in now. So the first one here, this is our chart widget. And the second one is our metric tracker widget. And the reason why I've used both is to show you the different functionality. Maybe you want a real basic graph showing the monthly revenue sales attainment by month. You can also do this by quarter. So you don't need two goals in Cascade. You just need the one goal 
And then I'll show you how you can add that widget and control how you want the data to look. The second widget is metric tracker. Now this is a widget that shows you a bit more detail. It shows you your attainment towards the target. So you've got that target um, just as a dotted line underneath. You can also resize these. So if you feel actually you need a little bit more visibility, you can make those a little bit bigger as well. So we can see here, for example, we're just trending slightly under our target. And as the months are going on, that gap is getting bigger. Um, so obviously we can jump on that straight away. And we can also see where we're at today and whether we're above or behind the target um, this month. And then secondly, as the one above, I'm looking at this by month and then I'm also looking at it by quarter. So I'll show you how to actually add these and where you can find them. So up here, click on the plus icon in the top right. You've got the chart option. Now think of this as a back to basics, bare bones. I want to build a chart and I want to start it all from scratch. You can choose the line option and then go and find your KPI. So ours is called something year on year goals, uh, year on year sales, sorry. So let's do search and then pick that. And then what we do here is we, by default, it will arrange time down the bottom and it will break it down by default. But this is where you can say, I want to look at this monthly or quarterly. Now, a few things, you'll see some grayed out. If you're looking at a span of a whole year, you only have monthly and quarterly. But if you have a goal that's quarterly, you'll then have weekly and monthly. So you'll see, depending on the time span of your goal, you'll have fewer or more options. Once you've broken it down by default, you can also say, I only want to look at the last month, or maybe I wanna look at the last three months, or if this is a big KPI, maybe you wanna look at the last five years. So lots and lots of options to get um, you know, the view that you want. I'm actually going to choose default and look at this by quarter. And then you can also bring in the legend down the bottom. Personally, I like to turn that off because you can have a chart title it kind of does the same thing. So let's do here on your cells. And then you can also bring the labels. Of course, super useful. We want to be able to see what those data and data points were. And then you can also have a little dot to show those data points if you want, up to you. And then click save. It's as easy as that to build a chart widget. The second one, which is the metric tracker, as I mentioned, very similar, but it actually is more targeted to KPIs. So you want to use this when you are looking at those KPIs and you want a bit more detail uh, added in. We'll go and choose that goal. And then again, we can break it down by month, by quarter. We can choose the period again. But you have an extra option here and that's expected progress. So you can also have a bar chart at the bottom where it's showing you that progress to target in a bar chart as well down below. So up to you if you also wanna bring in that expected progress that you can find on the tracking chart. And again, if you want the data points um, and the legend, maybe not. And then you can also say, keep the goals name, click save, e as easy as that. A little trick when you have lots of KPIs, click on the three dots and click clone. Go and click the settings and go and repoint to another KPI. So I think we had one for the percentages. And then let's break this down. This is quite a big goal for many years, so let's look at it by annual. So a really good trick, if you've got it configured how you want it, just click clone, and then it will give you that metric tracker. So there's some of my favorite widgets, um, can be really useful for bringing in that data. Then you wanna bring in your updates, maybe have a bar chart pointed at kind of more of that uh, holistic view, and then maybe uh, I'll show you this field here is the notes widget. Um, so the updates one is called updates, and the notes widget you can basically use as a blank canvas, maybe have some bullet points. You may also link off to, uh, you know, a deck or the Zoom link for the meeting, whatever you want it to be, and that will drive more of that uh, culture of bringing the focus together in that meeting. Hopefully that was useful. I will just switch back to the deck. I'm speeding through a little bit because I think we're running out of time. Um, but thank you. Any questions? We're always here to help. I know this is a lot of information. There's a lot that you can now go and pick up with Cascade. Um, I will dig into the questions now in the chat. Um, but if you get stuck, there's live chat. So if, you, if you've forgotten how to build the widgets or perhaps um, you want a bit of help with Excel, we do have live chat, so feel free to jump on that as well. But thank you. I hope that was useful. 
any feedback, comments, or anything you want us to do more of in the next webinar, feel free to let us know. <laughs> I'm reading some of the comments. Um, yes, it's recorded. Yep, you can share this with whoever you want. You'll get the deck, you'll get the recording. Um, we also have some help links as well, so don't forget to save those. Um, there's a comment about integrating with Workday. Bit of a complicated one. I might get Nick to jump on that if you don't mind. Yep, for sure. And if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that um, I posted that we can integrate with Workday Human Capital Management using Power Automate now. But other facets of Workday, we will have to spin up something custom to be able to tie into your own Workday instance and then pipe that data over to Cascade as well. And just as I'm chatting, um, there was a question about, uh, is it possible to pull data when a worksheet is tracking a variety of different data points? Uh, you have access, but no editing rights. Um, if you have access, but no editing rights, you can still integrate with the, sh with the sheet, no problem, as long as you can access it uh, on, your one, on a OneDrive account, rather. But, and it is possible to pull in data uh, that is uh, different data, data types, data points. Uh, I will say there is a certain structure that the sheet needs to be in to be able to use our Excel integration. But whether it's percentages, whether it's actual dollars spent, um, maybe kilotons of uh, waste uh, reduced, anything like that, you're able to pull in uh, any different types of metrics on that point. Thank you, Nick. Um, let's see, are there any links to training on widgets? Uh, we did do a webinar on widgets, I think. If not, we are gonna be doing another one. Um, I think doing these type of sessions are very powerful, um, but I, I know who that is, so I'll see what I can dig out for you. Um, a few comments about it being overwhelming. Definitely a lot of information here. Um, what we're gonna be doing is cutting this into bite-sized pieces as well, so you can go and look at building good KPIs in isolation, doing the Excel integration in isolation, um, et cetera. So any feedback on the parts that you'd want to hear more of is very welcome. Um, I think we've covered most pieces. Um, if there are no other questions, feel free to drop off. Thank you for joining. Sorry about the late start. Hope to see you on some future ones and you'll also get the content um, at some point today after the session ends. Thank you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Laura.